Welcome back to Let's Make a Game, the channel where we are making a computer role-playing game using the free program Twine and the Sugarcube format for Twine. I have programmed another spell into the game, and as usual I would like to show you what it looks like in play and then show you the code that made that happen. So let's create a character. I've set it up so that every character starts with Cat's Eyes, which is the one that we'll be doing today. And Cat's Eyes uh, comes into effect when you run out of lamp oil and it gives you a little bit of uh, a sort of time limited ability to see in the dark. So to make it activate, I have to run out of lamp oil to get this down to zero or less. So I'm just going to walk back and forth. And as you can see, the oil is going down as I do that, and also it's printing this slightly darker. And we notice that two things happen. One, the oil, instead of showing a um, number, shows the icon for cat's eyes to indicate that we are now seeing by means of this magic. And we get this message, your lamp runs out. You take out your eyes and put in your magic pair of cat's eyes. They will let you see in the dark for a while. Um, I thought it was more interesting. Um, I had it before as it's a scroll that allows you to cast the spell cat's eyes, but I thought it would, was more interesting to have it as a physical pair of cat's eyes that you can somehow put in your head and, and see. Um, mechanically, it's exactly the same, but I thought flavor-wise that was a bit, a bit cooler. And then um, we wander around for a limited amount of time we just we can encounter people um, encounter monsters as normal um, but eventually um, we'll get this message you have seen through a cat's eyes too long your brain decides that you are a cat and you run on all fours soon to be killed by the creatures of the underworld so cat's eyes is Sort of inherently unreliable because we don't know how much time we've got left and um, usually I would imagine people would use it to sort of get back to the entrance as quickly as possible and leave the um, leave the underworld as soon as possible so that's what it looks like when you're playing um, let's get into the code now um, I'm not going to show you everything that I did um, for example, when I was doing, uh, when I was printing the um, the map, um, you'll remember that normally the picture gets darker and darker as you run out of lamp oil, and it doesn't do that if you're um, seeing via cat's eyes because um, if it did, it would give you too much of a clue, and I didn't want people to know at all how much time they had left. So I won't, I mean, but that, that's fairly sort of simple. There's, there's a lot of fairly simple stuff. Um, I changed the messages that you get when you get a magic uh, item if the, if the creatures of a settlement give you a gift um, so that instead of saying, if it is cat's eyes, instead of saying they give you a scroll that allows you to cast cat's eyes, it says they give you a magic pair of cat's eyes. Um, but again, that wasn't sort of particularly difficult. Um, I'm only going to show, like it's fairly straightforward. I'm going to show you the bits that aren't straightforward. Um, the bits that aren't straightforward, I have to say, are very not straightforward. Um, this, it's very, it's quite counterintuitive. This, um, this, this bit of programming. Um, and I will say that if if I explain it and you go, hang on, that doesn't make any sense. Um, please feel free to, to 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 watch it again. Like it took me a while to get this to work. Um, I went down a few dead ends and and. Um, I think understanding it, it, it doesn't feel sort of intuitive to me. And so I think that to you, um, it's likely to seem counterintuitive as well. So I don't sort of feel like, oh, what's going wrong if, you know, if, if you listen to my explanation and you feel that it doesn't explain, um, that's, 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 that's fair enough. Um, I will also say that I have this problem that I haven't quite been able to solve, which is that it's, it's creating this ghost page here, which isn't, shouldn't be a page, but... Um, so I'm just going to, I'm aware of that if anyone's noticed that. Um, I haven't quite worked out the solution to that yet. But um, 
with those caveats, anyway, let's look at uh, what I've done. Well, the first thing I did was a thing that I should have done. Uh, I should have done already, and that is, I had a few pages um, in which the variable LO, which relates to lamp oil, how much how much lamp oil you've got left. Um, it reduced that by a certain amount, sometimes a set amount, sometimes it was random. And then it checked if you had, if LO was over zero, and if it wasn't, then um, it uh, gave you a message saying you've run out of oil and you're in the darkness and you are dead. And when you've got that same bit of code in lots of places, you shouldn't uh, type out the code each time. What you should do is have a single page that has that code and then include that page. Um, firstly, that'll save you typing things out multiple times. And secondly, if you change anything, it'll automatically change it in all the places where it needs to be changed. So I did that. Um, every place where um, it checks the light, um, I have some sort of code like this. So let's zoom in. Uh, um, oop, sorry about that. There we go. Maybe one more. Oops. Goodness me. There we go. Okay. So we have set LO equals LO minus two. And as a result, we need to check the lamp oil because that might have brought it below one. So we set set SD equals quote, open to, unquote, that is, the, that is the destination that we'll be going to in particular circumstances. Include light, or include um, square bracket, square bracket, light, L-I-G-H-T, unsquare bracket, unsquare bracket. Um, light is the page where we're doing all the checking. And then we have if, um, if exclamation mark dollars DD, which means if DD is either unassigned or zero. In other words, if we haven't given DD a value at all, or we have given it a value and that value is zero, then include square bracket, square bracket, open to, end square bracket, end square bracket. So um, you can see that the thing that we include in this circumstance is the same as um, this SD variable, and that's that's always the case. So we, I have something like this code in quite a lot of places. The difference is the value of SD and the um, thing that is included in this if exclamation mark dollars DD uh, are always different. So they're, they're always just the page that you go to after this, and it's usually just the name of the page too. Um, so let's go to light. So you'll, first of all, you'll notice that the very first line of light is less than, less than. If dollars LO is less than 1, greater than, greater than. And that, that if, the corresponding slash if, is right at the end. So what that means is that if, if this condition isn't met, in other words, if dollars LO is um, equal to 1 or greater than 1, then light will do nothing. This whole page will just do nothing because all of this code will be skipped. Um, and that's what generally happens. So let's go back to um, to open. Because generally speaking, LO will be above zero, because for most of the game you'll have you'll have lamp oil left. So normally speaking, what will happen is it'll say set dollars SD equal to open to, include light, that'll do nothing. If exclamation mark DD, well, we haven't done anything with DD in in light, we haven't done anything at all, so that condition will be met as well, and it'll include this page open too. So most of the time, this whole code will just be include open too. That that's really just the consequence of m almost all of this will just be just continue on to open to the page open too, or continue on to the page haggle too, or whatever the page may be. Um, it only does something other than just moving you on if LO is less than 1. In other words, if you run out of light. So let's look at what happens 
if you run out of light? Well, firstly, we set DD equal to 1. And if we go back to open, I'm going to be going back and forth quite a lot in this, I'm afraid. Uh, you'll notice that setting DD to 1 will ensure that this code doesn't execute because it'll say if exclamation mark dollars DD, well, that's not right, DD is equal to 1. So it'll just skip, it'll skip all that. So we know that whatever else happens, either the game's going to end, there's going to be nowhere to go, or there's going to be some code in here that sends us on. If there's no code in here that sends us on, then the game's over. And often the game will be over, of course, because this is the page where uh, you might have run out of light. And as we know, running out of light might mean that you've um, run out of game. Okay. So the first, so this is a this is a, an if else if, and there's quite a, there's a couple of else ifs, and then slash if structure. So there's quite a few things that can happen. The first one is if dollars ce equals equals one. Well, we haven't seen ce yet, um, and it it stands for cat's eyes, and what it means is that you have uh, enacted cat's eyes. You are seeing through cat's eyes. Um, so if CE equals equals 1, you get this message, which is you have seen through a cat's eyes too long, your brain decides that you're a cat and you run on all fours, soon to be killed by the creatures of the underworld. That's the message we saw uh, when I was playing the game earlier in this video. Well, there's no reason for that for CE to be equal to 1 yet. So we might, let's say CE isn't equal to 1. Well, we'll go to this next one, which is else if dollars SL square bracket 1, unsquare bracket, equals equals 1. Now, SL is stands for spells learnt. SL1 is set to 1 if you've learnt spell number 1. Uh, spell number 1 is cat's eyes. So, else if dollars SL, square bracket 1, unsquare bracket, equals equals 1. In other words, else if the player character has learnt cat's eyes. Well, if they've learnt cat's eyes, we get this message. Your lamp runs out, you take out your eyes and put in your magic pair of cat's eyes. They will let you see in the dark for a while. Then we set CE equal to 1. Now what setting CE equal to 1 means is that if we end up on this page again, it'll with, with LO less than 1, then it'll look at this if CE equals equals 1 and say, oh, well, CE is equal to 1. So it'll give us this message. And that, of course, will end the game which it, the message is you've seen through a cat's eyes too long and your brain decides that you're a cat and you run on all fours, soon to be killed by the creatures of the underworld. So what setting CE equal to 1 does is it makes cat's eyes a one-off, uh, a one-off bonus. It's not a thing that you can just use over and over. If we didn't have this set CE equals 1, and if we didn't have this if CE equals equals 1, if we just started with if SL1 equals 1, then you could just keep putting in cat's eyes again and again and never run out of light, and that isn't the intention. So we set CE equal to 1, we set LO, we add a random number between 12 and 72, uh, and because 1 uh, in LO equals 5 minutes in the fiction of the game, that is between 1 and 6 hours. And then we uh, have this continue, and this is the only place where SD is relevant, that, that, um, that destination variable that we set in the previous screen. Uh, it prints something like this. This is an example of what it might print. Um, so it might print something like square bracket, square bracket, continue, uh, vertical line, open to, n square bracket, square bracket, dollars, dd to zero, n square bracket, n square bracket. And what that is, is a link with the text continue. When you click on the link, it takes you to open to. And when you click on the link, it sets the variable dd to zero. So in other words, in this particular branch, it'll set CE equal to one. It'll increase your LO score. So you've got between somewhere between 12 and 72 extra points. Um, you won't know what, which, and then it'll say continue. It'll send you to the next screen that you were uh, sort of heading towards before you included light, 
and it'll set DD to zero. Now, why does it set DD to zero? So let's go here. Well, because we've got all these if exclamation mark dollars DD go to the next page. Well, in this, let's say we just run out of light on this page. Well, what we want to happen is we set LO equal to LO, set dollars LO equal to dollars LO minus two, and let's say that takes it to minus one or something. It was one before and now it's minus one. Okay, set SD to open to, great. Include light, well that include is gonna give us a continue, and that continue, uh, it's gonna give us a link, and that link is gonna send us to open to. It'll look at this, it'll say, well DD equals, DD uh, does equal zeros, sorry. <laughs> Um, DD has not been set to a non-zero value, so therefore I'll, I won't I won't do any of that, and that's fine. We don't want it to do that because we don't want to include open two because we've got that we've got that uh, link that sends us to open two. So we don't we don't want both of those. But let's say we end up on this page again, and DD is still equal to one. Well, then it would include light. It would say, is LO less than one? No, it's not. Okay, we'll skip all that is not dd the case no that isn't the case so i won't include open two so what will it do well it'll do nothing well we don't want it to do nothing next time next time we want it to go to open two so that's why we set dd to zero in the uh in the continue link uh that's probably the most confusing bit of this code um so if you are staring at me going wait that can't be right that sounds like the opposite of what should happen no, it is what I've said is actually right, but it is very counterintuitive. So again, feel free to go back and and look at it again, and you know, feel free to ask me anything in the comments um, as well, because I, I I answer every comment. I don't get it. I get I get you know sufficiently few comments that I can do that. But anyway, so we've dealt with the situation where SL one equals one, which is to say that you. Um, you can you can cast cat's eyes and CE isn't already set to one. The next option, else if CX dollars CX equals equals zero and dollars CY equals equals zero, then it says you arrive at the entrance to the underworld just as your lamp runs out and it gives you a another continue link. Uh, this time it takes you to beggar. Um, that page is called beggar because when you leave the underworld there are beggars around the entrance and they um, you you have a choice of giving them shells and they either bless or curse you depending on. Um, randomness and on how many shells you gave them. Um, I've decided, you know, I sort of decided to be merciful. I decided that it was a little bit, it was fairly realistic that if you, if your lamp ran out, but you were right at the entrance, you'd probably be able to find your way out of the entrance just by, by feel. And there aren't ever any monsters at the entrance. So you'd be, you'd be safe eventually. Um, and if none of those things are true, the very final else is your lamp runs out in the dark you are helpless against the monsters of the underworld. And that's the thing that would mostly happen. Most of the time your lamp will run out. You won't be able to cast cat's eyes and uh, you are not at the entrance. And so you end up dying. So that is the code. As I said, it's a bit counterintuitive and confusing, but you know, um, that it is what it is. It took me quite a few dead ends to, to, get, <laughs> to get it to work. Um, so I imagine it's probably as, as confusing to, to to hear about as it is to um, as it was to program, but uh, I hope that was useful or interesting to at least some of you, and I hope you will tune in next time.